glad to be with you uh, wherever you're studying and following up with the study questions in front of you um, and following uh, our Matthew series uh, more closely with a group of friends or maybe on your own. Um, I just want to encourage you to continue to dive in in this way. Um, this is why we provide uh, this summary recap of the previous message and also the questions for us to really dive into this um, as Matthew unfolds um, all of the prophecies um, to prove that Jesus is the King. And you'll remember, uh, we spent a lot of time in the Old Testament book of Micah. And the reason we did that was to understand the context of God's people and how they were living in order for us to see afresh the fullness of who Jesus is as the ruler and the king, the good shepherd who will feed his people and ultimately shepherd them by laying down his life for them, giving his life away for them. You remember in Micah's day, the people were doing the exact opposite of that for one another. They were um, planning wickedness on their calendars um, and planning to sin against one another by uh, stealing lands and robbing people. And uh, there were preachers who were saying, look, as long as you give me more money, um, I'm just going to tell you you're going to get a blessing. But if you don't give me more money, um, you're not going to receive a blessing. So false prophets were rampant in his day. And they were robbing God or robbing God's people. The big sin in Micah's context was covetousness. And God hates it. It is a breaking of his law. And we saw that God's judgment ultimately came on his people in Micah's day. And Micah is so torn and broken by this, seeing this, that he strips himself naked. He removes his sandals and the upper covering of his garment. And he laments. And we talked about how when it comes to sin, we ought to lament and not just simply think, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm, I'm good, you know, God's forgiving, and I'll just keep on sinning. That's what God's people were doing in the Old Testament, and God would not have it. That's not part of the covenant relationship that I have with you. And in the midst of all of this, you would think that God would just not provide any hope, but he does. He does to Micah and to a remnant of God's people, he says, from Bethlehem in the future, a time is going to come when a ruler, the one who's going to really feed my people well, and the one who will shepherd my people, who will lay down his life for my people, he's going to come. And he's going to pardon all their iniquity. And if you're Micah, you're longing for that day. We're just on the other side of of Christ, aren't we? So we're looking to Christ, and he is our only hope. He's our good shepherd. He's our ruler who feeds us well. And we come to him and him alone, bringing all of our sin and all of our junk and acknowledging we need him. That's what Matthew wants to point out in chapter 2 as we looked and ended that sermon or ended the message. Is that Jesus was born in Bethlehem and he quotes Micah 6. It says, or Micah 5, he's the one. He's the one to his Jewish audience. He's like, I want you to see he's the one. And the rest of his gospel is going to unpack and prove that he is the one. But for now, I want you to take the questions in front of you as we even go back into Micah again um, together in your study and press into this um, because it is for our good that we do. I pray that you um, are blessed during your time together and your study together. Um, remember, Jesus is the ruler who came into the world to be the good shepherd. Love you all. God bless. Enjoy your time together.